Hello everyone, my name is Pixlriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are going to embark on a very important expedition. The goal of today's episode is to find our first diamonds. Now this is going to be a very difficult task because diamonds in Minecraft are exceptionally rare. They are the type of material that you have to dig down really far in the caves to find and I am not guaranteed that we will even find any in this episode. I think I'm going to try and cave until I find some diamonds. So I'm just warning you guys up front here, there might be a couple of edits in this episode. I might not be able to show you the complete sort of path all the way down to finding diamonds. But if we do find some, I will show you guys the coordinates that we have for the diamonds on the screen so you can dig down and find them yourself. But the thing about finding diamonds is that they are randomly generated in the world below a certain depth in the world. So right now, if we're standing at about sea level, about the level where ponds and stuff will generate and the sea will generate in Minecraft, this is the debug screen that will tell you your coordinates. Over there in the top left hand corner where it says XYZ and there's a long string of numbers, that one in the middle that says 63 is our Y coordinate. That is how many blocks above the bottom of the world we are. So if you imagine there are 63 blocks between us and the floor of the world, and we have to dig down until there are only 16 blocks between us and the very bottom of the world before we can even find some diamonds. So hopefully we will be able to do that in today's episode, but like I said, I'm probably going to have to cut out a little bit of wandering around and looking for them because even if you get down that far, it can be quite tricky to find them because you either have to know exactly where to look or you have to get very, very lucky. Before I go, I am going to cook up a little bit of food because I have been doing a small amount of work off camera for this series just to make sure that we got enough animals together in this little pen. And as you can see, I've also been shearing some of the sheep because I have a project in mind for when we get back from our caving expedition that I want to do a little bit of building with the sheep's wool. Wool isn't just used for making beds and crafting things, it's also a building block, just like a lot of the other stone and wood blocks are in Minecraft, so we can use that to develop our house here a little bit, because as you can see, it has remained a sort of a wooden shack for the last few episodes, and I thought it was probably worth upgrading at some point. So I've been harvesting a little bit of wool from the sheep, and I've been harvesting a little bit of steak from the cows. Now, the other thing about starting a farm over here is that once you have a, a kind of herd of cows that you can breed together and, and keep harvesting food from them and keep kind of breeding them together over and over again, you don't need to worry too much about preserving the cow population elsewhere because you know you've always got a source of cows that you can come back to. The same goes for the sheep over here. And it looks like some of the squid have just been <laughs> sort of suffocating themselves on land over here. They've been swimming up on the shore and dropping their ink sacs. Well, that's fine. I will I will bring some of those back with me as well. But yeah, right now, I'm pretty comfortable knowing that I have a bunch of cows here that as long as I don't kill the last ones, I'm always going to be able to have a renewable source of cows here, a renewable source of leather and steak and, and also milk, because you can milk cows in this game as well. So that means I've been able to go around and kill a few of the cows in the surrounding neighborhood, and I've gotten myself some steak. I'm also going to use a little bit of wood here to cook up the last of the steak and this mutton that I have in my inventory because, as I said in the previous episode, one of the things it's very important to have for a long caving trip is a good source of food. And as you can see from my hunger bar, I'm pretty hungry already. One last thing I am going to do before we go is I'm going to take the iron that we obtained in the last episode and I'm going to make myself the last piece of armor we needed, which is an iron helmet. And there we go, I'm all kitted out in iron armor and ready to go caving. I might even also make another iron pickaxe because we're going to have to do a lot of digging and we're going to need the right sort of tools to bring with us. So we've got plenty of plenty of iron, plenty of iron pickaxes to go on with. We'll keep the sticks on us and if we grab any more coal, we should be able to make some more torches. That looks like all of the food is cooked up. I'm going to leave the leather in the chest here, but I think everything else aside from maybe the stone hoe, we can probably bring with us. And we're going to go and explore further down in that cave that we explored in the last episode. So most of it should already be quite well lit up 
All we need to do is start digging down once we get as far down into the cave as we think we possibly can. Now one of the things that it's useful to remember about caves in Minecraft is that not all of them will go all the way down towards the bottom of the world. Some of them will end up kind of shallow. They will, they will stick around the surface and they will not go any further down. So if you can't find a cave that naturally reaches further down into your world, then it's often a good idea to just start digging downwards in a kind of staircase formation, somewhere that's clearly visible so that you can make your way up and down there at the blink of an eye. Anytime you want to go caving further down in the world, you can just come back to the same staircase. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to make a little staircase down here. We're just going to dig into the wall as much as we can. Oh, and it looks like looks like there's already a, uh, a section of the cave down there. Well, we can place a couple of blocks so we can keep making our staircase. And I'm actually quite tempted to dig towards the noise of these spiders. Strange though it sounds, because sometimes you can find spiders in the world quite quickly and sometimes they take a little bit of time to emerge and wait a second is this some naturally formed cobblestone because if that is then we have just got very very lucky my friends oh my goodness me we have okay well now we know what the noise of all of that spider noise was about i can't, <laughs> this almost looks staged i'll be honest with you i did not know this was here i i genuinely did not this right here is one of the things that Minecraft players, when they've had a little bit more experience, will look for almost as soon as they start a new world, because this right here is what's called a dungeon. And we can, <laughs> we can hang around behind this wall and take care of the spiders. We don't need to worry too much because spiders are two blocks wide, so a lot of the time they won't be able to fit through these one block wide spaces, and it's usually fairly safe to fight them as long as you keep a safe distance and can swing at them with your sword. So the thing you see over there on the floor is a monster spawner. And monster spawners can come in a, a few different varieties. They are either spiders, cave spiders, zombies, or skeletons most of the time. They all look like these cages here with a little spinning animation of one of the monsters inside of it. And in this case, it's a spider. And if this area around the spawner is not adequately lit up, like it's completely dark when we got in here in the first place, then it will constantly generate spiders. Spiders will just keep appearing in this area until it is properly lit up. And whilst <laughs> destroying one of these with a pickaxe can give you a little bit of experience, it is often far more valuable to keep them here because being able to spawn a bunch of monsters in a single place and reliably spawn them there instead of having to rely on Minecraft being completely random with its monster spawns means that you can turn them into sort of farms. And you'll find a lot of people on YouTube do that with these spawners. They'll turn skeleton spawners into farms where they can acquire a lot of bone meal and bows and arrows and that kind of thing just by making sure that there's a safe space for them to fight the skeletons from. The same can go with these spiders, because spiders drop a couple of resources. They will drop spider eyes, and they will drop string. String can be crafted into a bunch of useful stuff, including bows and fishing rods, and even wool, and spider eyes are used for brewing potions later in the game. These dungeons will also have chests inside of them, which contain a decent amount of loot. Now, this loot can be anything from zombie flesh to string and the other kinds of things that monsters will drop. There'll be a little bit of gunpowder in here. In this case, we have two gold ingots, which is wonderful treasure, and also a saddle. So we can even talk about taming the horses that are wandering around on the plains. There's even a little bit of food and wheat in here for us. And these beetroot seeds, which are something else we can go back up to our farm on the surface and grow. So this was a fantastic find. And for those of you guys who are playing along with the same world in Minecraft Java Edition, the coordinates for this are 16x, 47y, and 190z. So if you want to start developing this spider spawner into something, if you've seen a great tutorial for a spider spawner farm online, go to it. I would love to see that. And if you want to drop me a screenshot of that on, uh, on Twitter, at Pixlriffs, or anything like that, I would love to see you doing some stuff with this. For now though, I think we will end up keeping some of these items in this chest here because it can get a little bit overwhelming in your inventory if you're carrying a ton of items around and we want to leave some inventory space for those diamonds because we don't really want to be throwing away any resources that might be valuable later on in this world. So I'm going to keep digging down in more or less the same direction that I was 
and we'll probably dig out some of this room later if we want to convert this into a farm for string and other spider drops. Spiders will also give you experience from fighting them, which is another good reason to do that. And it looks like this has opened out into an even deeper cave. This is good. And that is not good because skeletons have come out to fight us almost immediately. But we can get the drop on them and we should be able to clear out this cave nice and easily. And this looks like it goes even further down. So this is absolutely perfect. Wonderful stuff. Hello, Mr. Creeper. <laughs> These guys will come at you in caves occasionally and all you need to do is block with your shield if you're worried they're going to explode and hopefully no harm should come to you. I hope you guys are having fun fighting some stuff down here in the caves because we are probably going to spend this entire episode doing stuff like this. And there we go. Three hits and he's down. I'm still using the axe occasionally as a weapon because just... Now and then it will do a ton more damage than the the uh, than the sword will, so it's kind of useful to have that that extra hit every now and again. So it looks like we're about to encounter some lava. I think this is probably the first lava that we found in the game, and this is just a flowing stream of lava that's coming out of the cave wall over here. Lava is a substance in Minecraft that you have to be very very careful of. Most of the time it is very easy to spot because it generates in caves and it's bright orange like this, has a very distinctive flowing texture and makes lots of lava popping sounds and kind of gloopy sounds which you can see in the subtitles even if you can't hear them in the game at the time. And the best thing about lava is that it moves very very slowly so if you want to block off sections of it like this you can, it's not going to run everywhere and we can even, if we're very careful, sneak around here and block it off at the source. So if we do that, there we go. Then that should uh, help us avoid running into it. Because lava, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, can be very, very dangerous. If you step into lava, you will take a lot of damage, you'll be set on fire, and if you die in lava and your items tend to explode and go everywhere when you die... They, uh, they will end up burning up in the lava and you won't be able to retrieve them. So lava is best avoided if you possibly can whilst you're adventuring in these caves. It looks like there's a lot of iron around here, most of which I'm currently ignoring, but it will help to collect it in future because we need a little bit more iron for other stuff we will be building throughout the course of our Minecraft adventure. And also because... Eventually, some of the tools and armor we make will need replacing, and if we can't replace them with better ones that are made out of diamonds, then we're probably going to have to harvest a lot of iron just to repair or remake some of the pieces of tools and armor that we've lost. So let's grab some of this while we're here, and let's also take a quick look at our coordinates to see how far down we are. 24. Okay, so we're only 24 blocks away from reaching the bottom of the world, and we should only really need to travel down about another 8 blocks or so from, I think it was around here, the bottom of this cave. We should only be needing to travel about 8 or so blocks down before we're getting to the height where we're going to encounter things like diamonds. So let's hope. Let's cross our fingers, folks, and let's take a look at what we've got down here. You'll notice I'm saving my iron pickaxes as well. I'm, I'm mining a lot of this with the stone pickaxe, and that is because the stone pickaxe can't harvest diamonds. You're only able to do that with an iron pickaxe. So it's kind of important to save the iron at this stage for the important stuff. And even though mining with a stone pickaxe is a little bit slower, it's probably worth keeping it handy just in case. Let's take another quick look at our coordinates. Okay, we are now at Y level 14. I am actually going to dig down to Y level 11 for this. And there is a lot of debate online about how the what the best way is to find diamonds. And people usually say that anywhere between levels 5 and 16 is the best place to find diamonds because... Around level 4 and below, you start to encounter bedrock, which is the block that makes up the bottom of the world in Minecraft and stops you falling through the bottom of the world. It is basically the unbreakable block in Minecraft. It is the, the, uh, the spot that you can't really get through. And generally speaking, you don't want to run into that because you, you can't really move it. You, can't, you don't want to be able to encounter something that you can't mine around. So, <laughs> so it is it's usually best to start a uh, to start a mining expedition a little bit above that and 16 is kind of the top level of diamonds and so you're not really going to be able to m find a lot of the diamonds that you're going to find underground if you only mine at that level so somewhere sort of in between is nice 
A lot of people say level 13, a lot of people say level 10. Personally, I like level 11 because level 11 is where you start to find lava lakes and they always generate at about floor level. So you're not gonna have lava coming in from the walls. You're not going to end up digging into lava. Most of the time it makes lava a lot more avoidable. And so that's why I pick Y11 as my starting coordinate when I'm looking for diamonds. A lot of the time, when you're looking for diamonds, if you can't find a cave that takes you down to Y11, you will find yourself making long tunnels like this. And this is called branch mining and occasionally strip mining if you just want to strip out every single block of the walls of the, of the tunnel as you go. But a lot of the time branch mining involves simply making branches or tunnels like this and then maybe stepping back a couple of spots and just digging into a wall, making a ne another branch of your mine and making sure you light everything up as you go, but then just kind of digging around to see if you can find any diamonds. This isn't necessarily the most efficient way of finding diamonds, but then there are different definitions of efficiency as far as mining goes, and I'm sure we'll get into that in more detail in another episode. But for now, we're at Y level 11, as you can see from our coordinates, so we're gonna do a quick bit of digging around down here and we'll see if we can find those all important diamonds. Well, we haven't found any diamonds yet, but what we have found is some redstone. Redstone is another resource in Minecraft that generates fairly low down. I think you can find redstone anywhere below Y level about 24 or something like that. I think it's, I can't remember it exactly off the top of my head because a lot of the time I just find it while I'm looking for diamonds, but there are other resources down here that are only found at lower levels. Redstone is one of them. Lapis Lazuli is another one and gold is a third. So those are also worth looking out for. They are definitely worth picking up and taking with you because these are precious resources. These aren't like stone where it's just kind of everywhere and you can find it at a moment's notice. This stuff is worth keeping around, especially because redstone can be used in Minecraft to make a bunch of kind of electrical contraptions. It's basically Minecraft's equivalent of electrical power. And so later on, we're going to be using redstone to our advantage to create some interesting contraptions and things like that. So we're gonna keep the redstone on us. We're gonna keep looking for some other stuff. And anytime we find a pocket of this, we're going to mine it because we will need it later. You may also notice that while coal only drops one piece of coal per ore block, Redstone drops a great deal more. I've only harvested maybe four or five blocks of redstone and I have 31 redstone dust. Lapis lazuli is the same. If you mine a single block of lapis ore, you will find a huge amount of lapis drops. And that is because you never really use it one at a time. In, in the case of coal, for example, if you're making a single piece of coal into a torch, it gives you four torches. Whereas redstone, you have long trails of wire that go everywhere and it often requires you to spend a lot of redstone dust to make something. So to balance that out within the game, they usually give you a lot more of that particular resource. Likewise, Lapis Lazuli is used for a couple of things in the game. It's used for enchanting items once you have an enchanting table, and it's also used as the blue dye in Minecraft if you want to, say for example, dye a sheep's wool blue, or maybe dye a piece of your leather armor blue. It's, it's required for that, e even for dyeing certain blocks like hardened clay or terracotta as it's called now and for dyeing blue concrete so you end up needing a lot of lapis and likewise similarly to redstone you will find yourself acquiring a lot of it as you go mining and it can fill up your inventory quite quickly if you're lucky enough to encounter a great deal of it Now, while you're down here mining, one of the things you may want to do is start to dig towards any noises that you hear, whether it's flowing water or monsters moving around or the sound of lava even, because a lot of the time when you find those things, they will actually be generating in caves nearby. And caves are actually a fantastic way to find diamonds because they're a lot more open. There's a lot more exposed stone. And a lot of the time you will end up finding yourself a cave which has diamonds just lurking on the surface. 
and I hoped that we would find one of those here, but it doesn't seem like we have. Instead, we have a little bit of redstone, a small lava lake, and some iron and coal around here, because iron and coal do not stop generating the further down you go. Oh, looks like we've got a little hint of gold over there as well, so we may as well go and grab that. And I'm going to show you a very handy trick for dealing with these lava lakes now, because naturally, while you can place blocks carefully around the edge of a lava lake to block the lava in, one of the other things you can do is just place a bucket of water on the shore, like so, and it will turn all of the lava into obsidian, which is perfectly safe to walk on. It isn't still hot, you won't burn yourself, and <laughs> you will be able to get rid of the lava. But beware, the lava is still lurking underneath some blocks around the perimeter here, so you do have to be a little careful to avoid that. And you'll notice, you can actually kind of see underneath the blocks here, the lava doesn't quite reach the top of that block, so you can tell there that the gold, if we mine that, is going to fall into that lava lake. So one of the things we might want to do is place a couple of blocks there just to make sure that the gold isn't going to drop in there. So when we harvest it like so, there's a solid block underneath it and we don't lose it in the lava. Because <laughs> I think if I mine this one, yep, there you go. <laughs> Luckily it popped towards us so we were able to gather that block up. but. It is entirely possible for your items to burn up in lava if you're just mining them like this. So, got to be careful about that because we want to keep all of the items we can at this stage in the game. I thought so. I heard the sound of flowing lava nearby and that has brought us out into a ravine. Now this is a very cool and also very dangerous place because ravines have a tendency to be incredibly dark inside and <laughs> you can hear that there are skeletons marching around. Now the fact that this ravine is at Y level 12 means it's definitely within diamond territory so it's worth exploring this to see if we can find any diamonds. The thing about the lava stream that's coming down from the top there is that we have to be pretty careful around it because if you just... <laughs> if you tip a bucket of water out around lava that's flowing like this, it won't always turn it into obsidian because only lava sources, only source blocks of lava will turn into obsidian. So we do need to be a little bit more careful around that. And whoa, okay, hello. Yes, I thought so, I thought so. We had a couple of creepers waiting to jump on us from the edges of the ravine. And that is the thing I was about to explain about why these places are a little bit dangerous. You see those dark spaces up there? Those will still spawn monsters. And sometimes when you're exploring the cave floor of a ravine, the monsters will take an interest in you, they'll see you from up there, and they will jump down and try and attack you. It's luckily, luckily I heard that creeper <laughs> land on the ground. It took a little bit of fall damage as it dropped down here, and we're gonna have to be extra careful to make sure we don't run afoul of any more nasty stuff while we're down here. Oh, beautiful. Okay, across the lava lake here, I can see our first blocks of diamond ore, so I am going to make my way over there, and it looks like a nice big vein of diamonds. There are at least four blocks there, which means four diamonds for us, which is fantastic news. So as promised, I am going to show you guys the coordinates for this set of diamonds, so you will be able to come down here and find them yourself, but I am going to quickly light up this area first because as you can see the the zombies around here are keen on finding our diamonds as well so let's put a few more torches up here there we go that should be safe enough for now this is the lapis lazuli ore that i was telling you about as well look at that a big pop of lapis fantastic stuff we'll be needing a little bit of this later on so it will be great to bring some of this back and luckily our inventory hasn't filled up with stone completely so we uh, <laughs> we should be okay for our return journey now let's dig out around here to see if there are any more diamonds hidden in the walls it's always worth digging around next to a diamond vein just to make sure that you're not missing any but it looks like we are just getting four diamonds today that's absolutely fine. Four diamonds is a fantastic start, and I am so glad that we have found these in today's episode. You know what? I'm going to take a screenshot of these. That's going to be the screenshot for our episode today, because yeah, we are, we are going to need these right about now. We are definitely going to need these. Fantastic. So, with our iron pickaxe, we are going to grab these diamonds. I will give you the coordinates now. These are at 
x equals 9 or maybe around 10. <laughs> the coordinates are sort of rough, but be careful if you're digging straight down to these because you might end up digging into the ravine and you don't want to fall to your death in one of these things. The fall from that would definitely make you go splat. But anyway, it is around 9 or 10 x at 12 y and around 112 to 113 or 14 z. There you go, folks. Enjoy these diamonds. I'm sure we are going to as well. We're going to get ourselves the advancement. Wonderful stuff. And then there doesn't seem to be much else left to do but explore a little bit more of this ravine and make our way back to the surface. So I think I will probably do the latter. I think we have pushed our luck a little bit down here and I think maybe we can find a couple more diamonds maybe in the next episode or maybe we should finally start renovating that house because it's been four episodes now and I have the urge to build some stuff. So I think I'm going to. But as you can see, I've laid a little trail of torches here, mostly for lighting purposes. But once I get back to my big long tunnel here, all I need to do is run all the way to the end, follow the torches on the right, and I'm going to find the right way back. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. That's going to be the end of today's episode. And I do hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Good luck finding your own diamonds. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you guys soon. Bye for now.